Moose stands for Maine Online Open Source Education. On its face, it stands for Maine Online Open Source Education. Moose means, oh gosh, it means a lot. It, it... Moose means, and this one's kind of a hard one to answer because it's easy to look at it from a couple of different lenses. To me, Moose means growth through creativity. Teachers get a chance to grow professionally by getting creative, designing modules with other teachers around the state. Quality materials to use in the classroom or quality materials that they can change and use. Students get a chance to grow by creatively interacting with their communities through project-based, place-based learning. But for me, Moose means collaboration, innovation, risk-taking, creative messiness. And for a lot of the teachers I work with, it provides them professional development. Trying new things and growth. And without any of those pieces, it's really hard to have something new and to try new things. How to create project-based learning, um, how to create lessons with universal design or place-based design, creating more learning through uh, experience. My name is Stephanie Connors, and I'm a team leader with the Learn With Moose project. My name is Andrew Doak, and I am a Moose team leader. My name is Kristen Shaw, and I am a team leader at Moose. I have worked with Moose in this capacity. This is my second year, and I have worked on the cybersecurity projects. And uh, right now I'm working on the United State, uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals with a focus on poverty. With Moose, I have worked on the Learn With Moose project since the very beginning in June of 2020, and I've been here ever since. And this year, I am currently the team leader for the iteration and improvement team. With Moose, I have worked on the career readiness and data science learning progressions as either an instructional designer, a module coach, or a team leader. Hello and welcome to our first ever Capital Connections episode on the MLTI podcast. My name is Joshua Schmidt and I am in a distinguished educator role with the MLTI team here at the Maine Department of Education. In the year and a half that I've been working with the department, I have seen phenomenal projects supported by even better people. The goal of Capital Connections is to shine a light on some of this great work while hearing from the people who make it all possible. For our inaugural episode, we are exploring Moose with the Moose team. And who better to interview than Jen Page? Welcome to the podcast. Tell us a little bit about the project and what your role with Moose is. Yeah, thanks a lot, Joshua. So yeah, Jen Page, um, I'm the Moose project manager. And so I've had the great fortune of being able to work with Moose ever since it started back in 2020 in different roles. And as the project manager, now I get to help the team leaders who are leading groups of teachers from all over the state to create uh, material and modules for the Moose Project, which allows uh, other educators <laughs> to access a lot of great online open source content. And so I'm just excited to be able to sit here today and talk with you to, to really highlight some of the work that those wonderful teachers have been doing. So pulling back the curtain a little bit. You and I first met as part of my master's practicum project focusing on learning loss recovery. Uh, before we had met, I knew a little bit about Moose as a pandemic response, and not only did I leave our chat ready to run through a brick wall for the project purely based on your enthusiasm and energy for it, but I also began to understand that Moose has evolved a ton from where it began and is now about a lot more than purely content which of course the platform has a ton of content on it. Talk us through that evolution and why it's been so important. Yeah, and I, I appreciate you seeing that evolution also in how we've talked about it and all of the different pieces that have kind of come up because from the get-go, Moose was really started as a, a pandemic response. It was a response to students and teachers not being able to be in school buildings, but still needing the support um, to be able to uh, do their schoolwork, to have connection to their peers, to be looking at things in their community in ways that really made them feel connected to 
the community and each other. And so the Moose projects start off as the main online opportunities for sustained education. And so the the point of it was to basically continue what had been going on in the classroom with support from the main DOE so that the the materials that were being delivered to students could really help scaffold their experience. A teacher didn't need to be in the room with them to help them move through the material. They would be aligned to the main learning results, so it would be sure that they were making progress on the things that they were um, intended to by the teacher's kind of curriculum, but really have that support from the main DOE and other educators so that the, the teachers, the students didn't feel so alone. Um, the concept of being project-based has been there from the start. The first year working through all this, the question that drove everything was, how do I interact with and impact my world? And I don't think that that has really changed, even though we've honed some things since then. But that idea of how do I meaningfully impact my world? How do I understand it? How do I interact with it has kind of been there from the beginning. But after doing an incredible job the first couple of years of creating like almost 300 modules in the first year or two, then we had teachers going back to classrooms. And so we had smaller groups of people that were involved. But then also it was really clear after we created all that content, there were these areas that still needed to be targeted or content areas, skill areas that really could use some help. A big evolution in the Moose project was to bring on team leaders that were designated to work on specific areas of content that had been identified as areas of need. Um, and I was lucky enough to come in at that time. I got to work on the climate education uh, modules and we had other people doing career readiness and the history of genocide and the Holocaust. And it's always been about how do we help teachers and how we evolve with what the teachers changing needs are. So I think even coming to it now, we're working on educator materials. Every round that we do, there's been these significant changes and in investments in how we, we do our work. And that idea of iteration and improvement has just been at the heart of Moose the entire way along, um, that we aren't static. We're constantly adapting to people's needs. And yet we're also honing what we're doing pretty much constantly to try and make it a predictable, useful place for educators and students to be. As a classroom teacher, my first experience with Moose was free, high-quality content. During pandemic teaching, it was a lifeline to finding good resources quickly, which we all needed at that time. However, as I've gotten to know the project more, I hear team leaders and content creators in the field constantly mention the Moose process and professional development of working on Moose as a huge benefit. It feels like the strength of Moose isn't one thing or the other. It's of a mixture of all of those benefits at the same time. Yeah, I appreciate you saying that. The The mixture is really it. And what we've come to with all that is it did start out to be about the content, about the standards, about the, the material that was being put out there. When we got team leaders that were full-time team leaders for the Moose Project working on these, these learning progressions, one of the things that we realized after that first year of all working together was like, you know, the real change that we're seeing, the real the real shift is working with these educators in these teams and hearing from them what a change in practice is happening for them, the way they're thinking about things. And especially the fact that teachers were being pulled in from all over the state. And it was a really unusual project in the sense that you're getting paired up with people from different disciplines. So it's not that all of the social studies teachers are, are working together. It's deliberately interdisciplinary. You're getting paired up with groups of people that are pre-K through 12. So you're hearing perspectives from different grade ranges. And of course, it's from all over the state. So we didn't have teachers that were in the same building, largely working together in the same groups. So it was a, it was a very diverse and rich educator network across the state and still is. And that's what we hear from the educators is that, you know, the professional development and the professional support that comes from helping to create material for the Moose Project has been so critical to them. And so that was kind of a shift that we made the second year in terms of how do we articulate what Moose is? Because Moose really, it's it's the content, it's the modules that are being created, it's the professional development for the educators and the shifting the field, and it's the physical platform itself. But in terms of what Moose is creating, I think it really does have an exponential impact 
both in the educators and what they bring back to their classroom from what they learn from each other and from working on the Moose modules and the fact that these modules are being created and then can be distributed throughout the state for anybody to work on and even throughout the country and internationally, we've had people working on them. So um, it's a, yeah, it's not just one or the other, it cycles. My favorite Moose project has been... My favorite Moose project has been the pre-K to 12 data science learning progression. In terms of projects that I've worked on, I think that the most valuable one was the Holocaust and genocide modules. I think that it allowed for a lot of professionals to have really powerful and meaningful discussions. The maple stories that my partner and I created in year one and that continue. We wanted to make learning about civics and government fun and engaging. How do we really bring this difficult topic, but so, so very important to the classroom in a way that is respectful, is able to be digested by kids. Students learn to make meaning and think critically about data in ways that are purposeful and authentic. We also centered our work around the idea that kids learn best through stories, and we wanted Maple's stories to be approachable and be about learning and growth and the importance of friendship. You can use Moose in many ways. You can use it to support remote snow days. You can use Moose to help supplement your units and your curriculum. Moose can be used in parts, or in its entirety. None of our lessons or modules are perfect and they're not supposed to be. No lesson or module is perfect. And I think that's the beauty of it. They can be changed, they can be adapted. They can be used in bits and pieces. So you can use parts of modules to help support parts of learning. Parts of modules can be teased out and used for some of the learning experiences to support concepts math, science. They can also be used during advising times. To bring a full and fun learning experience to students so they can explore Maine, connect with their community members, and learn to problem solve in creative ways. It can also be used at home by parents who might want to help their kids out and say, hey, you're struggling in these content areas. You know, maybe we work on this project together and see if we can't figure things out. These lessons are from main teachers and now they're yours. What do you hope the impact of Moose is on the field of education? I hope Moose continues to be a source of joy for both teachers and students. You know, adapt our lessons and change them up. Make them your own. That's the beauty of open source in the main online open source education. I hope the Learn with Moose impact is that creating instruction should be fun should inspire curiosity and wonder in learners and should be focused on learners solving problems that are relatable and authentic. I, I hope Moose provides a, a release valve for teachers and school districts and kind of relieves the pressure a little bit. You know, any bit we can do to provide tools to decrease the workload, make sure that the materials that are being shared or used are well thought out, vetted and effective. And we are back to finish up our conversation with Jen Page, project manager with Moose. This would also be a great time to talk about the Moose platform itself, which you can access for free at learnwithmoose.main.gov. If you haven't used it before or haven't accessed Moose modules recently, I would absolutely check it out. It is very, very impressive. So Jen, as we come to the end of a four-year cycle with Moose, I would love to hear some of your favorite modules, projects, moments that have happened since you joined the Moose team. Yeah, they they keep coming. Um, to be completely honest, we just found out uh, last week that, or earlier this week, that um, Moose won two international design awards for the the platform itself. And so that is big kudos to the Portland WebWorks team that has been working with us on the user experience, on the user interface. So that is a big highlight, it feels like for me, because it feels like um, it's been a, a, a labor of love that actually has created something 
really unique that's being recognized you know in other arenas than just education um but the modules and things like that and the the highlights of moose i think when we recognized that we could really help steer moose as team leaders with the educators that we're working with and have some of that ownership as a, a group of educators across the state, it became less about a top down, this is what we want you to do, and much more of an organic ground up, how do we make this work? And that in and of itself was not something I was expecting, but was really pleased about. In terms of some of the <laughs> the the fun memories, it's been great to hear about how these modules are actually being implemented in the classroom and some of the stories of the students that are working with the modules themselves. And that was really a window that we didn't have before because Moose specifically does not collect um, identifiable student data. Once you start using Moose in your classroom right now, we don't know necessarily how things are going or how many students are using a specific thing. So by being able to do the pilot program, some of the anecdotes and work that has come out of it has been so fantastic. Last year, we had a student that was going through one of our career readiness modules that was actually developing a business plan for their own lawn care business. And they were able to, to put a bid out to one of the golf course <laughs> golf courses in their area and win the bid to be the lawn care business for that. There was a um, classroom I heard about this past year that they worked on um, creating an accessible playground for um, students at their school. And so these were younger kids that went through and um, physically created, like used found materials to create what they thought would be accessible playgrounds, iterated on that multiple times. And so they got feedback from people, well, this would or wouldn't be accessible. Or um, even thinking about the cost benefit analysis of, okay, yes, it would be great to have a pool. What are all the additional costs that come along with having a pool? The richness there has been fantastic. And then personally, I also think that the shift that we've made to make sure that we are creating modules that really address equity and inclusion in a lot of different ways, not just in all of the modules and the little bits, but also we've been really fortunate to be working with members um, of various communities on the Wabanaki Studies modules, as well as the African Diaspora of Maine modules. And both of those are really looking from a place-based perspective of how do we take these lived experiences, bring them into the classroom, help teachers make sure that they have the resources and feel resourced to teach these types of topics, and then also be creating those modules in conjunction with those community members. So I think that that work also um, has been a real highlight of the Moose project. I feel like so many of the benefits of Moose are woven together. That authentic collaboration between educators extends to the content itself. As you said, it's deliberately interdisciplinary, which is so helpful as a classroom teacher because all of those pieces connect in such a natural and organic way. I want to end today by looking forward a little bit. As you've said, Moose has grown organically in its lifespan so what do you want the legacy of Moose to be if we're thinking three, five, maybe even 10 years down the road? Yeah, one of the reasons I had mentioned before that we were talking about Moose as standing for online sustained education, and now we are the main online open source education. So the open source aspect of it and really looking at how do we create content materials that are available for teachers ad infinitum and yet are also being updated and continually connected to whatever the evolving needs are of the state. That's really where I, I have so much hope for what Moose can continue to be. And one of the other pieces that needs to be codified a little bit more is the Moose method, like that idea of how have we worked with other educators and really elevated them in their practice, given them the that platform to be able to you know, really put something out there that's meaningful for them that demonstrates the type of learning that they're really proud of and that the, it's done collaboratively in a really interdisciplinary, interconnected way. And that space that we've held for educators, we hear time and time again that it feels so different than a lot of the other work that they've been involved in. And so I think that there's some 
legacy of the Moose Project that is like, how do you do this collaborative, interdisciplinary, innovative work that relies on these cycles of like rapid iteration and okay, yes, we did it that way this last time, but we're gonna we're gonna shift and take what we've learned and adapt and um, design our way forward. What I really hope lives on from this is the idea that as educators, we're always learning. Part of the legacy that we've created this way of working, this way of learning, this safe place for teachers to try and to fail <laughs> and to fail forward. Um, to recognize that we can have firm goals that we are are all aligning behind and yet have really flexible means of how we get there and to have that felt experience of like what that feels like when you are supported to be a professional that is honored for their learning, that is honored for what they are individually able to contribute just as much as we try and elevate that for our students and try and promote their individualization through all of these, I think the teachers being able to bring that forward, to feel what that feels like, and to bring that back into their classrooms and their schools is one of probably the undersung but really important pieces of what I hope lives on from Moose um, and what I also hope continues to be developed throughout the DOE and the state in general. If people were hoping to learn a little bit more about Moose or explore the Moose resources on the website, what would be the best way for them to get in contact with you or the team? So I think the best way that will stay current in terms of getting a hold of somebody, like right now you could reach out to myself at jennifer.page at main.gov. But if you go to learnwithmoose.main.gov, which will be in the show notes, you can get to the platform and there will always be a contact and about page there. And so you'll be able to get the most recent person to reach out to just in case anything ever does shift. But then also there you'll have links back to the DOE site that will allow you to learn more about the project, um, ways in the future that you might be able to get involved Um and any other resources that come come out of the project as we codify the Moose method. Jen, thank you so much for joining me. And I wanted to extend a huge shout out to the other members of the Moose team who helped me with this project, especially Stephanie Connors, Andrew Doak, and Kristen Shaw, who you heard throughout this episode. I also wanted to give a personal thank you to Tracy Williamson, our guru behind the scenes, who has been instrumental in helping this project move forward. And as Jen said, don't hesitate to reach out to her if you have questions about Moose modules or the Moose method, and definitely check out learnwithmoose.main.gov. I appreciate everyone who joined us on this inaugural episode of Capital Connections. We would love to hear from you, whether about great work you're seeing in the department or ideas for future episodes. The easiest way to get in touch with the MLTI ambassadors or the Learning Through Technology team is by emailing us at doe-ltt at main.gov.